discover the heartbreaking story of Father Pio's restrictions and how he responded with obedience and humility. This inspiring video will show you how to persevere through difficult times and trust in God's will. Welcome back to our YouTube channel following Padre Pio. If you're new to our channel, Padre Pio was a Capuchin friar, mystic, and miracle worker whose intercession is still very powerful and active today. We publish videos and shorts five days a week, so follow us to find out more about the life of this fascinating saint and you will be amazed at what Padre Pio can do for you, a family member, or a friend. And now to our story. Today's story is sourced from the book Padre Pio of Pretlicina, Everybody Cyrenian by Alessandro of Ripabotoni. Within his pages, Father Alessandro shares insights into the first moments when the convent of San Giovanni Rotondo received new guidelines for Padre Pio, and how the guardian father reacted to these newly imposed restrictions. Listen to this. On the night of June 9, 1931, the guardian father of San Giovanni Rotondo, Father Raffaele, received a letter from Rome in which he was informed about the Holy Office's decision to place new restrictions on Padre Pio's priestly activities. Now, this was not the first time the Holy Office decided to impose restrictions on Padre Pio. But these new restrictions were by far the harshest. These new restrictions, or serious measures as they were called, were as follows. Padre Pio was not allowed to hear confessions nor celebrate Mass publicly. He was to be deprived of all his priestly activities, except for celebrating the Holy Mass alone, which he could not celebrate in the church, but in the private chapel within the convent walls, away from the eyes of the congregation that loved him dearly and without the assistance of anyone. Here is a photograph of the actual altar where Padre Pio celebrated Mass alone between 1931 and 1933. The letter also suggested, if necessary, to convince Padre Pio to obediently submit to the new restrictions, and asked the guardian father to do everything he could to convince others as well if needed. As you can imagine, the Guardian Father was devastated. The Holy Office had made it his responsibility to persuade Padre Pio to submit to these new measures, despite his belief that they were unnecessary. What follows is a note from the Father Superior himself. When I read the letter, I was filled with a feeling of discouragement and dismay. What should I do? I couldn't talk to anyone. On the morning of the 10th, which was the very next day, I went to Faja to see the provincial. But nothing could be done. Everything was to be conducted in a way to avoid a rebellion. And then I returned to San Giovanni Rotondo. I had to inform Padre Pio about the order. There was no way around it. This same order was already known to other fathers and religious members of the Capuchin community. I gathered my courage, and after Vaspers, when Padre Pio was praying in the choir, as usual, I called him to the parlor and told him about the decree of the Holy Office that prohibited him from celebrating Mass publicly and from hearing confessions, both from the faithful and the religious. Lifting his eyes to heaven, he said, May the will of God be done. Then, he covered his eyes with his hands, lowered his head, and said no more words. I tried to comfort him, but it was only in the crucified Jesus that he found consolation. Shortly after, he returned to the choir and remained there until after midnight. Padre Pio did not utter the slightest complaint during the two years of his harsh trial. He was, as usual, humble, obedient, and patient with everyone. Those few who tried to console him in some way never heard a complaint 
or the slightest criticism against the authorities. For him, all of this was the will of God. End of testimony. Padre Pio stands as a remarkable example of Christ-like obedience and forgiveness. But it is easy to overlook the strain these restrictions had on the Capuchin community of San Giovanni Rotondo and the faithful who loved Padre Pio and longed for his presence. This was a time of trial for everyone, not just Padre Pio. Everyone who loved him felt the weight of these harsh restrictions. As we can see in the Father Superior's account, he wanted to help Padre Pio, yet nothing could be done. But thankfully, in 1933, Pope Pius XI ordered the Holy Office to reverse its ban on Padre Pio's public celebration of Mass. And in 1934, Padre Pio was again permitted to hear confessions. Finally, after enduring this challenging period, Padre Pio joyfully resumed his priestly duties, an occasion celebrated not only by himself, but by the entire community. Thank you for listening. Please do share this video to help our channel grow. And please give our channel a boost by continuing to watch another video. This will help with the YouTube algorithm. I have recommended some videos especially chosen for you on the end screen. Or just click on one of the links in the description below for a full selection of great Padre Pio stories or our playlist Padre Pio Thoughts for the Day. And don't forget to enroll your Mass intentions for next Friday's Padre Pio Holy Mass. You will find the link in the description below. And stay tuned for the next video on the life of Padre Pio.